Okay, seventh graders, pretty little easy assignment following up with the last one we did, 2.1 and 2.2. So this assignment is called 2.3 and 2.4, natural selection, a deadly dare. Your learning target, I can describe how natural selection influences individuals with adaptive and non-adaptive traits. All right, so moving on, activity one is your notebook for today. So add natural selection to your vocab page and add key concept number eight to your key concepts page. So, hey guys, can you be careful not slamming the door? Will you just pop it open, please? Okay, so natural selection is a process by which the distribution of traits in a population changes over many generations. And then finally, key concept eight, individuals with adaptive traits are more likely to live longer and have offspring. Individuals with non-adaptive traits are more likely to die without having offspring. That doesn't mean that they're all gonna die and that that population with the non-adaptive trait is going to go extinct. We're just gonna see less individuals in that population with that non-adaptive trait, okay? All right, so your warm up for today, another little Sherman story here for you guys. Sherman, look at all these dragonflies. Many generations ago, this population used to be brown, but now they are mostly green. Oh, wow, how did that happen? I know this must have ca been caused by something in the environment, right? Yeah, that's right. It all started with many years of a lot of rain in this area. As a result of all the rain, the dragonfly's environment got very green and... Oh, wait, I get it. The brown dragonflies all got eaten because their predator could see them more easily in the green environment. And the green dragonflies survived because they were camouflaged. The very same green dragonflies that are still alive today. Actually, Sherman, you are only partially right. The correct explanation is, so if we're looking at this population of dragonflies, are the ones that are green still alive today? Okay, and does that mean that all the brown ones went extinct because they were the only ones getting eaten? Okay, so moving on, we have two claims from lesson 2.2. Poison level and 10, so if we're referring directly to our newts and kind of relating it to what we read about Sherman here. Poison level 10 is the most common because the newts with this trait were able to live longer than other newts. And poison level 10 is most common because the newts with this trait reproduce more than other newts. So what do you guys think Sherman is correct about? Okay, so if we're looking at this little comment here, what do you think he's right about? And what do you think he's not so right about? Okay, all right, moving on. You guys are going to do this little reading here. So you'll right click this link, open it up. And then you guys will read A Deadly Dare, Rough Skin Newt Defenses. So you guys are going to learn a little bit more about rough skin newts and their poison level. Okay, and then you guys have some questions to answer on these. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail with these. This is a figure directly out of the reading. So read through each. Make sure you guys know what the key means. So if you guys see these little red dots, that's the amount of tetrodotoxin, excuse me, the poison, which is tetrodotoxin. So you guys can see these only have one dot versus these have like five or six dots. So these are the more poisonous ones. Okay. Uh, notice that if it has an X through it, that means that that individual dies. Uh, so maybe it gets predated upon. Maybe it just dies of old age, whatever the case. And then these little dots here mean that they're reproducing. So notice those. So if you look at number two, adaptive traits are helping organisms survive in their environment. Organisms with adaptive traits are more likely to survive long enough to reproduce. Okay, and then three, the organisms that reproduce pass on their traits to the next generation. So we almost kind of look at this like a histogram. This is how many newts with the one poison level, this is how many with three, and then this is how many that have a higher level, okay? These ones die, this is what happens then, this is what our new histogram looks like, okay? We have more with these. All right, so from that reading, and you guys might need to go back and reference your reading, you'll answer these questions. Look at the diagram one. How could you describe the newt population? So use your draw tool there to circle the correct answer. Okay, look at diagrams two and three. Did newts from all poison levels reproduce? Circle yes or no. Look at diagram two. Did newts from all poison levels die? Circle yes or no. Uh, you're, so from your reading, look at diagram three. How could you describe this newt population? Circle your correct answer with your draw tool. Uh, what other questions or connections do you have about this representation? Answer your question there. So that's this little chart right here on slide six. Which individuals are most likely to die before reproducing? Those with adaptive traits or non-adaptive traits and why? Hint, you may use the newt population as an example in your explanation. When many individuals with the same trait die before reproducing, what happens to the distribution of that trait in the population and why? 
Why are there more newts with a high poison level in the population in diagram three than in the population in diagram one? Are the newts with high poison in diagram three simply the oldest newts? How do you know? Okay, and then that's really it for your guys' assignment day. Go ahead and complete the wrap up. Any questions, circle yes or no. If you have questions, type them in right there. And then four, three, two, one, how do you think you did? And you are all done. You can go ahead and hand it in. And I hope you're having a great day. Bye.